Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Cross. Last time we saved Riddell from within Viper Manor and the poor army. In the process, we fought a massive boss gauntlet of four bosses, including a mech, a giant cockroach, and two characters that then became party members. There's a lot of people we fight that become party members. Eh. And this time, before we do anything, you're going to want to save if you haven't done so already. If you're looking to get all the endings, you need, 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 need to make a save file now. After saving Riddell, but before going to Hermit's Hideaway where she told us to go. It is literally all we have left to do now. I just loaded up this file. It's all set up and ready to go. I'm going to be keeping that file. But yeah, we now have access to a boat in another world, and we can re-explore it. I don't know if it's Korsh's boat, or if it's a different boat. It looks the same, but then again, the boat that the uh, guy from Arnie Village that took us over to uh, the Water Dragon Isle in Homeworld looked like this too. So I'm guessing this is just a general style of boat that isn't a poor army boat. Now I could go exploring different things, going to places, we can do that later. We made a save file. Now we need to go to Hermit's Hideaway. Oh well, yeah, while we were in uh, Viper Manor, for some reason we saved Fargo. I'm not exactly sure why we saved Fargo, but we did, so there's that. Okay, just a quick minor change. We've uh, taken Karsh out and thrown Radius in. I haven't even set him up. It's merely for a scene. So let's go to the burned out hermit's hideaway. Hmm. Ground is hot. Did I not come and do that? I guess I forgot to do that. Where's my ice breath? Come on, ice breath work. There we go. Cooled that down. I guess I forgot to do it on uh, this file, though I did show doing it earlier. Well, we were told that uh, the general was. Wait, what? Oh, it's uh, it's the old man. Uh, Karsh is here anyway, by the way. He's not Sir Lynx. I mean, he's not Lynx. Really, are Surge? You should be able to tell. He's the only mute in the entire game. Do not sense Lynx's evil within you. So this is the me from the other world. I expected nothing but the best. <laughs> That's my line. And they do their stupid laugh. This entire scene reminds me of a specific scene from uh, Justice League Unlimited. Surprised to see me? A little. I'm more surprised that I lived so long. Batman, Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne, Batman. Or have you met? Not now. Yeah, I always loved that scene. It was just... Terry was always just a git, and he was hilarious. And I really enjoyed pretty much all of the Batman animated series and the Justice League animated series. It's all my childhood. But anyway, I brought him along strictly for that scene because I enjoyed it. Not used to being pursued. Couldn't believe it until I saw it with my own eyes. We did save Riddell. I think the reason I keep calling her Videl half the time is because Viper Manor starts with a V and then I'm saving Riddell from there. And Videl is, of course, the name of a character from Dragon Ball Z, which admittedly, I'm probably more familiar with than I am Chrono Cross. I've probably watched through Dragon Ball Z probably as many times as I've played through Chrono Cross. Eh, yeah, probably about the same, actually. Anyway. At least we were able to save Lady Riddell. Gotta kick them all out. All right. Well, there's Marcy. Now, last time we saw you, didn't you hate, 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 hate everything about me? Aww, 
Isn't she cute? Now she's not being evil anymore. And we can't talk to you. In order to progress with things, you need to talk to Riddell. Cannot allow Lynx to carry on like this. The depth of gratitude, so I would like to fight alongside you. Okay, sure, why not? You're inexperienced in battle. You will find me helpful. Indeed I will in exactly one fight. Riddell has joined the party. I, I love this. I, one of the things I watched in preparation for this LP was um, a speed run of the game at uh, I think one of the RPG limit break uh, marathons. And they had renamed her to like Lightning Rod or something like that. And I just, it just made me giggle because I know exactly her purpose in the run, even before the run had started, because it's the same purpose everyone gets her. She's not a terrible character. But, uh, well, this is only the beginning. This is, uh, well, you'll see. Sure, we should rest. Oi! You're back on your feet! Well, that's good to know. Well, he managed to survive being stabbed. Sorry to trouble you like this. You did indeed. We are being attacked. This place is already burned out, but we're being attacked. Your nine lines of I know that accent. I guess Viper wasn't the only one to survive. Keep that thought of what uh, Serge just did in your mind. I will explain it in a little bit. Today's the day I finish you off. I'm a bad feeling about this. Doesn't seem to be herself. This is indeed Kid, and this is Evil Surge, who decided to put on a pirate's hat, or a, a hat with a skull on it, and look really menacing if you have the original uh, image for, or the original portrait for him, or the retooled one from Nexus Mods. You get the one that they put in the remake of this game. He's a fucking joke. Right now, you are the only one who is like, the thing is, he talks so, so demeaning and so deferentially, like he speaks in a way where he's having this intimate conversation with Serge and no one else can hear him, but people are standing around and they should be able to clue into it. Once our roles, like see, kids should obviously know things. Like, you literally just spilled the beans, dude. To her, killing you will avenge Luca. Now, I don't know if the idea here is that this is some kind of telepathic speech, but there's no indication that it is. And he strict up, like, refers to her and includes all that information. How does she not figure this out? Is there some kind of mind control going on here? They did say that she's not in her right mind. Or she doesn't seem right or something. So maybe that's the case? It's not indicated very strongly in terms of the animation or anything like that, though. Again, Avenging Luca, what happened? How do you know Luca? We have this shack completely surrounded. There is no escape. It's like on the Phantom Train. We'll see about that. Speaking of people that we saved a little while ago, there's uh, Fargo, along with Polly, and we're gone. Of course, there was like, I don't know, six or seven others that are stranded in that hole in the ground, but, um, oh well, this is only the beginning.
Good work, Polly. Well done indeed. The others are safely aboard. Well, that's good. We managed to save everybody. Here, Surge is reminiscing over Kid's theme. Thinking about the past. The idea behind this sequence, the fact that he heard Kid was there and instantly ran out to meet her. They're trying to build up this relationship between the two. And this relationship doesn't come across as well as I think the game devs had hoped it would. One of the issues is the game expects you to recruit Kid right away and then do everything you can to save her, so she's in your party almost the entire time. That's not the way I've played the game here, not on this file. And I've shown all the scenes on both paths. It doesn't really change the fact that we don't spend nearly as much time with Kid as the closeness of these characters is being indicated as here. Serge's devotion to her and his developing relationship with her, it's not very well earned. And I think a lot of that also comes down to the silent protagonist. It's very difficult to develop a relationship with a character when one of them is silent and the other is missing half the time. What is the most important thing in your life? Hmm. What is the most important thing? Captain Marty told us about you. No matter how you look at it, you really do look like him. Uh, just dropping by. Oh yeah, the captain was looking for you. In deep trouble if I let you leave. Just keep your distance. Uh, just about to leave. Yeah, they won't let you. The upcoming sequence is required. Now... I believe it's already been revealed. If not, I'm going to tell you now. It's a minor spoiler. If I'm pretty sure it's been revealed, but Fargo was once one of the Acacia Dragoons. He served under General Viper. So they have a history. And Fargo having an issue with Viper probably explains one of the reasons why he originally left. Lynx is headed to the Sea of Eden. Let's do everything in our power to prevent him from obtaining the Frozen Flame. Now, the Frozen Flame is this MacGuffin that we really don't know a whole lot about. And we're not exactly, or I'm not exactly sure why they're telling us we need to stop him from getting it, but it's this mythical thing that maybe does things, maybe. You're going to lend a hand! General Viper has joined your party. Oh, what the hell? I'll help you out too. Saved my life twice already, and you paid me back for one of them. So I already know too much. Can't sit around and ignore the situation. Fargo joined your party. Probably the best one that we've gotten in quite some time, and we've gotten some decent party members. 
I'll deal with you later, Viper. So what's that? We've started this episode. We've got three characters already. Happy to accept your challenge. Now what? You guys are coming too. Well, H.C. Bailey turned it into a whole meme for his entire Let's Play. Might as well do it now. More fucking party members. We have managed to gain <laughs> five party members in this episode. Now, if you brought uh, Zoa earlier, you'll get Karsh here instead. But regardless, you get both either way. Shall we be on our way? And we're not done yet. I'm going to hold off before we do anything else. There is a unique aspect here. I don't want to go do that first. I want to go back to the ship. Fine, we'll do this now. But we are going to leave right away anyway. Oh, we have to do the scene first? Fine, we'll do the scene first. This place is called the Pearly Gates. It used to be the only entrance to the Sea of Eden. Legend says no one has been able to see it or approach it since the dragon sealed the evil flame, or the frozen flame. How are we supposed to get in? You need the power of the dragons that sealed the flame. You must break the seal of the pearly gates with relics from each of the six dragons. Now, the Sky Dragon had mentioned something about getting the support of all six dragons uh, before we would be able to get back into the Sea of Eden, so this concurs with what we've heard. True gate to the Sea of Eden is not here. It's in the other world where the Dead Sea lies. So where are we going to find the dragons? Scattered around both worlds. I alluded to this earlier, where we had, you know, differences in the islands indicating differences in whether or not we would see dragons. Marbuel has a sleeping black dragon in one world and none in another. The, we've met the water dragon in one world and we can't even get to his location in another world. It will be easy to find with all the legends about them throughout the islands. The other links disguised to Surge is already in here. How do you know this? His appearance is that of Surge. Even if you are able to get all six dragon relics, you will not be able to make it inside as links. Hmm. Dragon tier, but it broke. What question do you have for me? You had to choose between the world or me. What did you choose? There's three options here. Well, the logical answer is the world over the crazy jester, and then there's I don't know. I'm gonna go with the world. Go and find yourself. What do you mean, why do you have to tell him things? Is someone making you tell someone things? This is a much truncated scene if you have not recruited Starkey. He's one of the few optional question or optional characters that actually adds to an existing scene. Uh, 
most of the time, it's the mandatory characters that add to additional scenes, and the optional characters have their own little scenes off on their own. But for some reason, Starkey actually gets involved here. Fluid coming from your eyes. Something is different. Harley's makeup doesn't look the same today. Why do you lie to me? He looks so adorable. How could you lie to him? Cannot fool you. This is called a tear. Flow from your eyes when you are sad or when you are hurt. And you are sad so you can wash your face with tears. Um, not exactly, but <laughs> go to sleep, Starkey. <laughs> Don't tell anyone I was crying. Starkey like promises. Starkey will promise not to tell anyone Harley was crying. Crying means that Harley is sad. Why? Even though we're close, I cannot tell you that. You will find out eventually. If that time comes. Every problem has a solution. With the completion of that scene, Harley is missing from the party. Getting back on the ship gives us an interesting... I don't want to be down here. Actually, I could probably do it from down there. Can I do it from down here easier, though? Can I move, please? Okay, never mind. I uh, I had it wrong. I had the location wrong anyway. Actually, faster to go this way. And I had to go all the way through <laughs> looking all over the place to try and figure out where what. Oh, there's Karsh there. Let's talk to Karsh. Out of the way. What am I doing? Here by Lady Riddell's side, protecting her from scum. Personal bodyguard, nothing. Interesting. Here, there's some other people that have interesting bits of dialogue here. How's the captain? Explain your situation to the men. Very understand. Ones who ran off are back on board. Interesting. Now, some of these rooms we were able, never able to get into on this side. Oh? Wonder what is troubling him. She snapped out of it yet. Hmm, I guess that's more uh, more of an implication that something has some kind of an effect on her. I guess we're going to stop in all of these and talk to a bunch of people. Can I please go in the door? I hate trying to get in doors. It doesn't work. Well, I guess it makes sense that, yeah, you've decided to stay here for a while. You're going to be here for the rest of the game, but I might use you in one fight. Interesting. What do you say? A Riddell groupie. Lovely. Of course there's groupies. What do we got in here? Something different about this fish. It's delicious. Okay. Oh, I guess they're used to whoever was cooking for them before, and now Orch is cooking and Orch knows how to cook. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Good enough. Alright, what about here? There's the general. Track down links. Head to the Sea of Eden. Okay. A little more information. I don't think there's any items in here now. There's a lot of places you can go back to that most guides don't check. Uh, and there's just no indication since there's never any reason to go back there. Uh, so there's usually no information about it. Like, there was no information about the, uh, the bluffs in Homeworld because there's never any reason to go there. Getting used to this. Labor and his people aren't all that bad. 
big, huge bug fly over the Hydra marshes. I think it was heading toward Gaia's navel. Surrounded by bluffs and inaccessible by sea. Are you hinting something to me, game? Everything will work out fine. That's your outlook. Okay. Yes. You can sleep here if you want. Hey, free rest. I'll take it. So yeah, some of the NPCs around here are important to talk to. They give you little bits of little hints about what you're supposed to do. You guys encountered a dragon before. Said to be strong and fierce. Uh, not like you. In here, we have Pip. Hello, Pip. Who are you? Well, okay. It's what inside that counts. Pip is the only one who liked me enough that he'll join me when I'm late. Pip is unique in that aspect, and he is the only character you can get when, uh, like, carry over from when you are Surge to when you are Lynx by just talking to him again. So that's six characters in this episode. There are a lot of freaking characters they dump on you all at once. Some of them are good. Some of them, eh, not so much. Viper's not bad. He's powerful. Uh, lower on the accuracy again, but still quite good. Riddell is much more balanced this time than she usually is. Uh, but look at her magic stat. She's on par with Link, who's been getting extra stat ups all game long. She's got a massive magic stat, surprisingly a decent physical stat too. But yeah, she dwarfs everyone else, one of the best mages in the game. And our only other white innate character that, that well, wow, now that we have Pip, we have another one as well. But, uh, in addition to Starkey, our only other white character. Now Marcy has a decent magic stat. So depending, like, everyone's stats are randomized for each playthrough. Uh, so sometimes you're going to get a character that builds up more magic. Sometimes they'll build up more strength. But generally, like, certain characters are going to be more prone to be mages. And others are going to be more prone to be physicals. So Viper and Zappa and Orcha are always going to be physical players. Uh, some characters are going to be a lot more balanced. Characters like Marcy are usually more balanced than this. Uh, as you can see, Zoa is all physical. Karsh is usually a, yeah, pretty much about this. He's got a, a decent magic stat to go with his strong physical attack. And Fargo. Sadly, my Fargo does not have great stats this time around. That's unfortunate. Fargo is one of the best characters you can get, though, because... Well, you saw it in the opening dream sequence at the very beginning of the Let's Play. He has steel. I'm not sure if he did in that sequence, because I know one character was missing, missing it. I think it was Kid that was missing her tech, but regardless, Fargo has the ability to steal. He's a pirate. That makes sense. And we finally got access to steel again after a long time. It's been quite some time. Pip is still Pip. I'm still not going to use Pip. Apparently, like, there was a bug in the original version uh, with Pip where, because Pip evolves, right? Depending on which color elements you use, it can evolve one way, and then depending on which elements you use again, it can evolve another way. Uh, I think there's five different evolutions that it can eventually get, and apparently it broke his sphere, or not his sphere, his uh, element grid. Uh, like on level up or something like that. Something to do with his elemental grid being broken. And I, I don't know. I don't care. I'm not going to use Pip. Apparently it's been fixed in the remaster. I haven't tested this because I'm not going to use Pip. But if you want to use Pip, it's nice, I guess. And yeah, look at this. All these characters. We've got lots of good ones. Karsh is phenomenal right now. We gotta get Fargo in the party ASAP, because he's got stuff to do. But yeah, take a look at all the party members we got. Does that throw me back into the... Oh, okay, well. Well, that's nice. You're bored. Yeah, well, what can you do? But yeah, you can actually recruit uh, Pip on both sides. 
unique that way. Pretty cool. And with that in mind, we have a boatload of characters. Even with the loss of one in Harley, we've gotten more than enough to make up for it. Uh, there is that achievement for using Harley's level seven tech. So if you're a, an achievement hunter, you'll probably want to get that ahead of time. I'm not much of an achievement hunter, so I don't really care. Usually when I mess around with achievements, it's to keep myself interested in a game that I'm already starting to fall out of interest with. So one of the ways I try and keep myself into the game after that fact. Uh, if you don't have Starkey, the uh, scene with Harley there is really short and just basically ends right away. But having Starkey just adds a little more character to, um, doesn't really add much to uh, Starkey, but it does add a lot more to Harley. You just kind of see little bits of her. Anyway, what else we got? Well, there's some other stuff we can do. Our goal right now is to basically make our way into the Dead Sea in Homeworld. I think to get to the Dead Sea in, or the Sea of Eden in this world. I think that's our idea. That's why they, when we went into the other one and we saw those little white portals or those white spots in the, uh, kind of like in, uh, in Homeworld, there was a little spot here in the uh, triangle. There was some things like that and they were saying something about the amulet not working. So I'm thinking the idea is we are able to go there and then it warps us to the Dead Sea in this world, which is the Sea of Eden. Confusing. So the idea is we're supposed to go around, talk to all the dragons, figure all this kind of stuff out, and once we get all access to all the dragons, then we can move on to uh, like actually getting in there. But now we have full access to both worlds, which means we're gonna do everything but the main quest for a while, almost. We are going to do one of the uh, main quests because uh, we kind of need to. But that's pretty much all the time we have for today. Next time, I think we should start by collecting a few things before we do too much more new stuff. So we're going to return to Viper Manor and collect a few things that we left behind. Anyway. That's all for this one, and I'll see you guys next time.